I purchased this Xbox One X 1TB edition off of eBay for a grand total of £70, which equates to $90. The condition of the console is a little bit iffy, as you can see down here we have a cigarette mark, so this one's going to be interesting. Let's get into it. The listing on eBay states that there is no picture. The console powers onto a white light, but does not display a picture. I don't think anyone's been into this Xbox One X either, which is really, really good. We have a label at the top which says no picture. I don't know if you guys can see. And it says X02, don't know what that means. Xbox One X number two maybe. We also have a cash converters sticker on the back as well, which says 230 pounds, wow. The HDMI port on the device actually looks okay. Don't have any exposed pins from what I can see. So my immediate reaction when hearing about this fault and looking at the overall condition of the Xbox One X would be that maybe we have an encoder chip issue, I hope, or read timer issue. Let's give it a test by plugging it in to the power and also hooking it up to my TV to see what happens. Everything's plugged in as it should be. Do we get power to the console? Yes, we do. We get a white light, that's good. I didn't hear the noise, but we get a white light. I'm gonna put it back down flat just in case I end up breaking it. And would you look at that? I actually have an image on the Xbox. However, it's glitching out. It keeps turning off and on, off and on, off and on. And it's moving at about 2 FPS right now. If that, maybe 0.5 FPS. It goes to the home page, which is really, really good. I'm gonna press on the down arrow now. And that's how long it took me to go down. It's definitely glitching out and I think it's down to the TDP158 chip, which I'm gonna show you in a second. I think that's enough diagnosing. Let's take the console apart. And here we have it, an Xbox One X, which if I'm being honest, isn't exactly used to what I'm working with, but I have done one of these retimer changes before. I'll actually leave a link to that in the top right hand side of your screen right now in the card. Got me some serious deja vu. One thing the Project X didn't have, that this one does is like these rubber bits that just kept falling out. I have no idea where these bits go. I'm assuming it's for like noise dampening or something, but that's gonna be fun to put back. Overall, extremely clean board, so I'm really hoping that it is gonna be this little chip here. This is where we're gonna be focusing on today. We have the HDMI in, which is this port here. It goes to two little filters that we can see. I'll show you in a second under the microscope. And then we've got the main chip here, which is called a TDP158, which is the read timer chip, which interestingly works on an Xbox One S as well as an Xbox One X. But the chip that originally comes with the Xbox One S, the read timer chip, doesn't work on this console. Let's switch over to the microscope. Here we have the read timer chip that we're gonna be replacing, but I know that if we move over to the left side of the board, we have what, you see where it says NFD on here? I think, and I could be completely wrong, this is an EMI filter. Now I've seen lots of videos where this chip is actually at fault, but not really a proven way on how to recognize that this is at fault. I'm doing this out of pure guessing. I'm replacing this chip because it's the only thing I know to do. And if that doesn't work, I'm screwed. Just to rule out these little filters here, I'm gonna put my meter into continuity mode, which is the mode that beeps when there is a continuity a circuit and we're going to test from one side to the other side where there should be a beep. We'll test from left to right. Good. Nice, so they're absolutely fine. Let's go ahead and change this chip. To remove the chip we're going to go 450 degrees Celsius with an airflow speed of 80% using quite a big nozzle. Let's go. We're going to heat up the area first, slowly but surely around the chip, let everything get a little bit hot. These boards can take a lot of heat. Now we're gonna focus in on the chip. When I see the solder start to molten, I'll remove the chip. Just like that. I'm gonna let the board cool down a little bit, then I'm gonna get some leaded solder and just go over the pins and mix the leaded with the unleaded. That's gonna bring down the overall temperature, so it means I can still go 450 degrees Celsius, but it should be a lot quicker for me to put this on. Let's put some flux down. Now time for the leaded. Just give it a quick clean to make sure. I'm using isopropyl alcohol for this. I've probably got one or two pads here, see on the ends, that aren't really tinned up too well, so I'm gonna go over them.
We're gonna put the temperature for 450 degrees Celsius to put the chip on the board, but I'm gonna lower the airspeed to 50%, just to ensure that the chip doesn't fly out of my hands when I'm trying to put it down on the wetted solder. I'm gonna put my fume extractor on for this as well, so apologies if it gets a bit shaky. Flux on first. You can't really see, but the dot on the chip is here. If I try and, yeah, so you can see the dot on the chip in the bottom right, and then you've got the dot on the board. So this is the way that the chip's gonna go. Give it a clean with some good IPA and a toothbrush. Make sure that we get every single spot. Now it looks like, can you see how the chip isn't flat to the board? That's fine. We can get that sorted now. It just means that the area wasn't hot enough when I was pushing down on the chip. And I think, I believe we're gonna have the same for this side as well, can you see? Yeah, it's just not flat on the board. So we're gonna try again. This time I'm putting the temperature to 460 and the airspeed back up to 80%. And you know that's a positive result because we've got the solder balls that have squeezed out. Whilst the board's hot, we're gonna take our soldering iron and we're gonna get rid of the solder balls. There we go, clean and inspect. And let's just make sure under the scope that everything is nice and attached. There we go, that looks better. Just making sure from every angle, yeah, that looks a lot better than what it did before, perfect. This side, yep, a lot better. And finally this side, yep, fine. And most importantly, we got no bridges as well, so that's good. I'm also happy that that's a relatively clean job. Now, should we give it a test? I think so. Gotta sort out the thermal paste before we test it, Joey. There we go. Wait, there's nothing on it. There we go. I've put pretty much everything back together. I think you have to to test, I could be wrong. Maybe this is a blessing, maybe it's a curse. Let's see if this turns on first off. It does, we've got the little light down here. Do we get an image on the screen? Yes we do, come on, and it's smooth, yes. Let's quickly go into the settings and just make sure that we get 1080p. And 1080p is okay. Yep, yeah, it's all good. This isn't a 4K TV and I don't have a 4K capture card. But I'm pretty sure if we've got 1080p, we should be okay for 4K. I should have checked this before, but does it read a disc? Drive seems to work okay. We're looking for Rise, by the way. There's the game and it's installing. Does it eject? Wicked. I reckon I'll be able to get around about 140 pounds or 150 pounds, meaning I've doubled my money with this fix. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy it, make sure you hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel if you're new around here. Make sure you have a fantastic weekend and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.